The people who know my work um, are incredibly supportive. Mm, our next guest knows her work all right, Congressman Kevin Kiley, uh, but he was a state assemblyman for a long time in Sacramento. Kevin, how you doing, brother? Uh, I'm doing well. How are you? Really good. As someone who knows Kamala and her work very well, if she were to become president one day, it could happen at a moment's notice. What would be your message? You're the expert. You're the California guy. You know, what's your message to the country? Well, take a look at San Francisco right now. I mean, this is where Kamala Harris comes from. And is that what you want for the entire country? This is a city that is literally uh, collapsing before our very eyes. Uh, you know, Macy's closed its flagship store uh, in downtown San Francisco. It's a new business pulling out every day. More people are leaving. They're leaving at a faster pace than any major city in U.S. history, faster than even Detroit when it went bankrupt. And so Kamala Harris is sort of the personification of this very troubling trend in our country for San Francisco's failures to become California's failures. She went from the DA in San Francisco to the attorney general in California, and now increasingly for those failures to metastasize uh, and engulf the entire country. And so the prospect of her, or frankly, Gavin Newsom, who followed that same trajectory, San Francisco's mayor, governor of the state, of course, isn't making any secret about uh, his sort of national uh, ambitions. Um, I think that uh, what has happened in San Francisco and in California, uh, largely due to the failed policies of Gavin Newsom and Kamala Harris, is a warning to the rest of the country, and we cannot continue to go down that so, path. What is her worldview that would leave such chaos in her wake? Well, I think it's, you know, uh, endemic uh, or emblematic of the uh, just radicalism and corruption uh, that has come to characterize politics in our state and in particular uh, in San Francisco. Uh, I mean, if you look at the policies that she enforced uh, or that she uh, promoted uh, when she was attorney general, uh, she was the attorney general right after Prop 47 uh, passed in California, uh, which has you know led to this epidemic of retail theft. Uh, throughout our state. And then she also, as attorney general, by the way, uh, used her authority over ballot propositions to mislead voters. So even if voters wanted to try to change something that was happening in the state and put something on the ballot, she would uh, twist the language of it so people wouldn't know what they were actually voting on. So it's this combination of radicalism uh, and corruption uh, that is responsible for turning our beautiful state, greatest state in the country, in my opinion, into the most popular state to leave, uh, to, to leave behind and that is absolutely not what we want for the entire country. Just to put a bow on that, the Prop 47, which was the you can steal anything under $950, whatever, that was called the Safe Neighborhoods and Schools Act. So that was that Kamala who did that as, a, as Attorney General? Well, she was, yes, responsible for writing the official ballot language. And even, you know, uh, newspapers like the Sacramento Bee uh, and uh, pretty left-leaning editorial boards uh, called her out or using language that was even poll tested uh, to get the outcome uh, that they wanted the poll. So any sort of reform or anything wow. that people wanted to do that would actually lead the state in the right direction, she'd twist the language that you actually looked at when you went into the, the voting booth to vote in order to get the outcome uh, that she wanted. It's just one of many ways in which you know the, the system in California uh, has become very difficult to uh, turn around because the deck is so stacked in one, in, in one direction. Yeah. So you guys worked, you were in Sacramento as a state assemblyman when she was attorney general, you guys had crossover there. What were people saying about Kamala then? Well, I don't think she ever had a particularly uh, sterling reputation. I mean, if you look at when she was first elected attorney general, that was the closest race we've had statewide in California uh, at all, you know, any, any time in, in recent history. In fact, her opponent gave a victory speech on election night because he thought he'd won. That's how close the race wow. was. So even at that stage of her career, uh, folks were looking at what she had done uh, in her tenure uh, in San Francisco. We're looking at what has happened to San Francisco, the way that, you know, crime is just absolutely out of control there. And it's gotten much, much worse since and saying we don't want anything to do with that. Much has been said. We played some of Kamala's clips earlier where she makes no sense at all, just says words. Uh, is Kamala stupid? Is she not smart? How do you characterize her? Well, I'll, I'll leave you know those sort of characterizations to other people. But what we know is that her policies uh, make absolutely no sense at all. I mean, look at what uh, has happened at the border. She was supposedly uh, the border czar for this White House, right? Uh, and then refused to even go there. And we've seen uh, you know something that we've never seen before in the history of our country in terms of 
records being set every single day and every single month in terms of the number of folks crossing the border illegally. And so, you know, what's truly frightening about this is that, you know, we have both her and Gavin Newsom potentially waiting in the wings. Uh, and frankly, I think though that would be an absolute disaster uh, for their party that either one of them uh, would not stand up to scrutiny if people looked at their record, looked at what's happened to California, looked at what's happened to San Francisco specifically, where both of them and Nancy Pelosi, by the way, uh, come from. And it is the perfect case study in the absolute failure of these very radical out of the mainstream uh, policies and politics. That really is remarkable. Those three names you mentioned that they all come out of the same petri dish, uh, way on the way in one one little particular place, uh, far away, and 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 have so much power today. It's really unbelievable. Uh, I don't want to put you on the spot with this, and it's okay if you forget it uh, because I vaguely forget it too. But it's important, I think. Um, do you remember when there was the Planned Parenthood undercover videos uh, years back? And uh, you know the videos of people saying we're just selling the body parts and stuff like that. She was the attorney general at the time. Didn't she go after the guy who did the undercover videos as opposed to anything with Planned Parenthood? Do you remember that? Well, there are a number of ways in which yes, she used her authority in ways that were not directed at actually protecting Californians. She was the number one law enforcement officer uh, in California. Um, but rather, uh, you know, in terms of serving her own political agenda. So I don't remember the details of that specific case, uh, but that very much was her, uh, you know, her approach to her job, was how does she use this position to advance her political agenda, advance her own personal self-promotion? She ended up leaving that job in the middle of her term to become a U.S. senator, to run for mm -hmm. the U.S. Senate. Uh, at the same time, public safety in California uh, has fallen apart. Uh, support for law enforcement uh, has fallen apart. Crime has spun out of control, uh, and uh, you can draw a direct line between the policies that she promoted uh, from the beginning of her career up until the present day. All right, you have such an important role in Congress of being like the warning cry from California, like, hey, everyone, just, just so you know, rest of the country, what's going on? Uh, my last question for you, you are in D.C. now. Um, what are, are people saying anything about the potentiality? Holy geez, what if, if uh, Joe Biden, something happens and Kamala is the president, what do we do then? Are, are people even talking about that or they don't even want to manifest it out loud? No, I mean, I think that it's something that's absolutely on folks' mind. Uh, I mean, he, she herself even said she's ready to become uh, president. Uh, and it's something that always needs to be asked of the vice president, that, uh, the person who's, who's next in line for the presidency. Uh, but obviously, you know, in, in the present circumstance, uh, it, it's a question of, of all the more salience. Uh, and the fact that we have a person who is dramatically unpopular uh, across the entire country has shown a very limited capacity. Uh, for national leadership and whose uh, results in her home state of California and home city of San Francisco uh, have done such an incredible amount of damage. Uh, it's something that's very much on people's minds, absolutely. Yeah, the proof, the proof is right there. Former assemblyman in Sacramento, now Congressman uh, Kevin Kiley. Kevin, great to talk to you, man. Appreciate it. Likewise. Thanks for having me. Here's up. Thank you. Coming up next, we have John Phillips. But real quick on that Planned Parenthood thing. You, you remember that story, right? With the, the undercover, undercover videos, with the Planned Parenthood executives and everything. Kamala Harris was the attorney general at the time. And instead of doing anything about those people clearly breaking the law, she ordered the raid of the house of the guy who did the undercover uh, videos. And she coordinated, illegally coordinated, with people at Planned Parenthood to write legislation, or maybe another, maybe it was a ballot initiative too, um, in favor of Planned Parenthood, in favor of abortion and against, uh, well, in that case, babies. But that's how she used her power, of course, to protect Planned Parenthood.